For paleontologist Jack Horner, startling new advances in genetics create a fascinating new possibility. Birds are carrying the genetic memory of their ancestors. So we can re-retro-engineer, basically, the dinosaur characters from a bird. Horner's belief rests on experiments that are already uncovering these dinosaur features. His colleague Hans Larsen at McGill University is conducting one of these experiments. Larsen is searching for the genetic changes that turn dinosaurs' long tails into birds' short tails over 150 million years ago. This is a Albertosaurus, a relative of the T-Rex, and this guy has a tail that begins right here at the hips and goes all the way back for about 35 vertebrae. When we get to the very first bird, Archaeopteryx, they have about 15 vertebrae in their tails. And by the time we get to modern birds, like the chicken, we only have five to eight vertebrae in their tails. And with this kind of a transition, in a very, very sort of short period of time, I'll bet that the chicken and all modern birds have the ability to develop a long dinosaurian tail. Larson is a new breed of paleontologist at the forefront of a new field. He's helped discover seven new species, including a giant carnivore in the Arctic. But he's equally at home in the genetics lab and eager to apply molecular techniques to the study of dinosaurs. He begins by studying the development of a normal chicken's tail more closely than anyone has before. He stains embryos at different stages of development. And as he peers at an embryo, just one and a half days old, he is startled. Larson expects to see four to eight vertebra, like the adult chicken. But instead we're finding right off the bat, and very easy to find, uh, up to 16 vertebrae fully formed inside the early developing chicken embryo. So we're seeing that we have these really, or really fairly elongate tails, these sort of reptile looking tails on birds, uh, early in development. And then if we follow it through development, we see that it gets shorter and shorter and shorter until they hatch. And then we have only about five vertebrae left in the tail. Larson has discovered that the chicken embryo has a tail almost as long as an Archaeopteryx, the transitional animal between dinosaurs and birds. So for about 150 million years, this kind of a tail has never existed in birds, but they've always carried it uh, deep inside their embryology. Now Larson is trying to reverse evolution. Can he make an adult chicken grow a long dinosaur tail? He starts with a list of genes he suspects control the tail's growth. He'll see what happens if these genes are kept on longer than usual. Larson implants a bead at the end of the developing tail. It contains the same protein that a gene would manufacture if it stayed active after it normally shuts off. Several days later, he looks to see if the developing tail is longer than normal. One by one, he experiments with different genes. And after several months, he hits the jackpot. Here's what we found. We found that we could extend the tail a little bit longer. So now we have three more vertebrae added into the tail. And moreover, I think even more exciting for me, is that the scaffolding that all the vertebrae are developing onto is enlarging as well. Larson suspects that the genetic system for developing a dinosaur tail is intact in modern birds. It just turns off earlier. This tells us what's actually responsible for going from a dinosaur shape to a bird shape. And now we can go straight to the heart of the question. We can go right to the genetics, right to the base pairs of the genome, and see what's changing between these things. Larson is turning back the genetic clock millions of years. I see no reason why we could not um, develop experimentally a completely dinosaurian-looking tail in a modern bird. 
the system for developing that is, is in place. If birds can make dinosaur tails, why not teeth? Since a bird's DNA contains a dinosaur tail, does it also contain other dinosaur features? Occasionally, an ancient evolutionary feature pops up naturally as an atavism, a repressed ancestral trait. This recently discovered dolphin has vestigial legs. Modern dolphins no longer have them, but their ancestors did. The genes that trigger the formation of legs are now turned off, but the genetic circuit to make them is still there, and once in a blue moon, a mutation turns it back on. Sometimes, human babies are born with another atavism, a tail complete with vertebra, a reminder of our ancestral past. In 2005, Matt Harris and John Fallon at the University of Wisconsin discover a new atavism that links birds to dinosaurs. Late one night, Harris is studying the development of feathers in a strain of mutant chickens. As he peers in an embryo only 14 days old, he notices something strange. Looking at the head, I came across the beak and there these structures were that were not supposed to be there. They look like teeth. He shows it to Fallon, his advisor, and together they try to make sense of it. We were shocked. When a chicken smiles at you, it's something. But are they really teeth? What would birds' teeth even look like? We started to talk about what the closest living relative yeah. of birds would be, and that would be the crocodilians, and alligators would be something we could get our hands on. They peel away the beak to examine the structures more closely, and clearly see that they are saber-shaped, just like the teeth of alligators. They even section their structure and compare it with a section of an alligator tooth at the same stage of development. What we see here is that in an embryonic alligator, you have little bumps, which is actually the formation of these embryonic teeth. In the mutant, you get expression in the same regions. The same developmental programs are being turned on. Teeth are developing in this mutant. Their chicken is on its way to developing teeth similar to alligators, T-Rex, and Archaeopteryx. But do all chickens still have this ancient dinosaur circuitry? Harris decides to see if he can create teeth in a normal chicken. He opens an egg and injects a virus into the spot in the embryo that is developing into the beak. The virus will insert itself into the chicken's DNA and carry with it a gene that initiates the development of teeth in other animals. Harris suspects that this gene is present, but simply turned off in the region of the embryo that forms the beak. But his experiment is a long shot. The making a tooth is a very complex structure, and so the idea that turning on one gene might be able to do this in an animal that hasn't made teeth in over 70 million years was somewhat of a stretch, a slight stretch, like a Hail Mary pass. Two weeks later, he examines his embryo and discovers a link to Bird's ancestral past. So this is what we found. It's very exciting. Now, this is actually the, the mouth of one of these experimental chickens. And while well, you can see very clearly the fact that you grow paired structures here on the lower jaw that look like teeth. And so the normal chicken can actually grow teeth. We were both very surprised. Yeah, it was, it was totally unexpected.